In this video, I want to talk about the DNA polymerases in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So we'll start off with eukaryotes because they're simple and they really only have one DNA polymerase that we're going to be concerned with. Prokaryotes, however, have three. They have DNA polymerase one, two, and three. So eukaryotes, their DNA polymerase synthesizes five prime to three prime, and it has three prime to five prime exonuclease activity. I'll talk about why that exonuclease activity is important in just a second. So now, let's talk about DNA polymerase one, two, and three, how they're similar, how they're different, if there's anything special about any of these. How many of them synthesize 5 prime to 3 prime? All of them. DNA polymerase always synthesizes 5 prime to 3 prime. Always. So all of them synthesize 5 prime to 3 prime. Now, how many of them have 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity? All of them. Now, what is exonuclease activity? What is nuclease activity? Let's look look at this really quickly as an aside. So there are these things called nucleases. A nuclease is an enzyme that degrades nucleic acids. So DNA is a nucleic acid, RNA is a nucleic acid. If something is a nuclease, it can degrade nucleic acids. There are two subclasses of nucleic acid or nucleases, and those are exonucleases and endonucleases. Exonucleases they act on the ends of the strands. So if this is a DNA, a double-stranded DNA molecule, and this is an exonuclease, exonucleases could start cutting off the, um, the monomers at the ends. So it could act here, okay, or here. Endonucleases, they can cut the interior of the strands. So they can act here, they could act here, they could act here. Who knows where they could act? They can act somewhere in the interior. Okay, so now knowing that, Let's think about what exonuclease activity means in terms of these DNA polymerases. Well, so we mentioned they all have three prime to five prime exonuclease activity and they all synthesize five prime to three prime. Let's think about this. The idea behind that is that if they're all synthesizing, they've made their five prime and they're synthesizing, they're adding DNTPs like this, right? Five prime to three prime, and then they add one and it's wrong. Right? What if DNA polymerase makes that mistake? So it should be able to go back and erase that, right? And then go back and continue on further polymerizing. Okay? So three prime to five prime exonuclease activity is the idea that they can go backwards, right? They can go from the three prime three prime end to the five towards the five prime end and then you know, and then get rid of their incorrect DNTP that they attached, and then add the correct one. So this three prime to five prime exonuclease activity, why is it important that they all have this ability? Well, this ability is the proofreading ability. Basically, if if the DNA, um, excuse me, this should say polymerase here. If the DNA polymerase makes a mistake and add an incorrect base. For instance, if there was supposed to add a T and it added a, 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 a G, that's a problem. It has to go back and fix that. So in order to go back and fix that, it needs to take off the T and then add a G. So it can go back, take it off, and add the correct base. That in, in order to take it off, it needs to have the exonuclease activity. And it's, it's going from the it's going backwards. It's going three prime to five prime. So the three prime to five prime activity. Uh, exonuclease activity is a proofreading ability. Now, they all have these traits in common. Now, what makes some of these special? DNA polymerase one is special because it has it has five prime to three prime exonuclease activity. Now, that's a little bit interesting. What's the purpose of that? So, why would that be useful or necessary at all? Well, if we think about this, this is going to actually be involved in removal of the RNA primer. So recall from the last video that we mentioned that RNA polymerase, or primase specifically, adds an RNA primer right at the five prime end, and then DNA polymerase can begin to go. So DNA polymerase, what it does is it goes over and it sees this primer, 
and what it does is it goes through 5 prime to 3 prime, cuts it away, and replaces it with DNA. Okay, so it cuts it away and then replaces it with DNA. Okay, so it's involved in removing the RNA primer. It wouldn't be able to do that without this 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity. And it's the only one of these three that has that. Keep in mind, these three DNA polymerases are only in prokaryotes. Now, there's nothing really special about DNA polymerase 2 that I want to mention. But DNA polymerase 3, it, is, it also has a fun fact associated with it, hence these pink stars here. So DNA polymerase 3 has the highest, what we call, processivity. Processivity. What does that mean? What that means is that it can incorporate the highest number of DNTPs before falling off. So now all of these DNA polymerases can add DNTPs uh, and make DNA. But how many can they each add before they fall off the, uh, the complex? So polymerase 1 can add approximately 200 before it falls off. DNA polymerase 2 could add about 1,500. DNA polymerase 3 can add about half a million. That's insane. Okay, so clearly this one is really, really good at going through and just adding DNTPs before it falls off. So it's actually the primary uh, DNA polymerase involved in actually extending a, a DNA uh, chain. Okay, so I, I hope that little overview of the DNA polymerases was helpful. This is important as we talk about the actual replication fork. I hope that was helpful. One last thing, I'm a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at mufuniversity at gmail.com and see the description below for more details. Thank you for watching.